gonna make myself comfortable for this one. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My chair is spinning. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with a different video today and it's my story about our elopement wedding and a few things that I feel are important to share with you. I have already filmed this video once. I wasn't completely happy with it so I'm kind of pleased that I'd managed to lose half of it. I don't know where it went but when I went to upload, uh, went to edit it, it kind of started in the middle, which is weird. But never mind. So I'd really like to talk about this in a really relaxed way and there was a couple of you when Jo and I put out our Cornwall vlogs that said oh can you tell us a bit more about eloping and your experience and what you did and how did it work and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try not to miss out any information but if I do and you've got a burning question about anything then you can always leave your question in the comments down below or you can go to my blog which I'll put here and my email is on my blog so you can drop me an email but I will also put my email in the down bar because sometimes you want to ask a question that you don't want everybody else to see but that's fine if you want to get in contact with me and you've got anything that's kind of a bit more personal that you wanted to sort of throw out there and you know ask why not? Let's start with perhaps the reason Joe and I decided to elope over get having a big wedding. I can only really speak for myself. I mean, I know a few of the things he would say, but I'll just see it from my point of view. And that is that I have never been the sort of girl who's always dreamt about a big wedding, dreamt about a perfect dress um, or situation or party or whatever. I just, it just wasn't the thing that I was interested in. And that kind of continued on as a theme as I got older. I was never a real dreamer of a big princess wedding and I always saw myself having a very very quiet wedding or something like an elopement. So when I met Jo and Jo's thoughts were very similar to mine, either a very very small wedding or an elopement, it just kind of confirmed my thoughts and I thought you know what that's right and also from a financial point of view I would never ask my mum and dad to spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pounds. I'm not saying that's wrong, I love going to big weddings, I really love them, but that's just not something that I would feel comfortable with doing, because I'd rather have money towards something else, and I kind of believe that it's not really up to my mum and dad to provide the money for my wedding. But that's just me, and it doesn't make it wrong if anyone else thinks differently, that's just my opinion, so please don't shout at me. So, they are the main reasons. Now, when we started looking for venues, we kept it in our minds that we got engaged in Cornwall and we really wanted to get married in Cornwall, because it's somewhere that we both know really well, and it's somewhere that hopefully one day we want to live, so we wanted to get married there, and it's a magical place to us. So, we both sat down and we googled small weddings in Cornwall. And the first place to come up turned out to be the place we got married in and it's a company called Boho Cornwall and the property is an old arts and crafts house called Boskian Country House in a little village called St Just in the far west of Cornwall right near Land's End um, and St Ives and all that kind of area so right over the very very west you can go really and Boho Cornwall specialises in elopements and small weddings well now it's just elopements but when we very first saw them it was small weddings and elopements and we still sat on the fence, we weren't sure if we wanted a small wedding um, or an elopement. So we went to see them and saw the property and it is strange when you go to somewhere and you're being shown around and you think wow this is what it's going to be like, it's going to be us two and those two that own the house, Tom and Maya who are amazing, I'm going to link them all down below, um, they are great people but you think wow I don't know these people and they're going to be witnesses at my wedding. That's a bit strange and you do feel a bit strange about it but it's soon kind of sunk in that that was a really good option for us. And looking at the price point as well, it's still expensive, but it's affordable if you're paying for your own wedding. However, my mum and dad kindly did pay um, for probably half, if not three quarters of our wedding. I'll come to that in a minute. So we looked at the venue, we discussed it for a long, long time. It was not a quick decision. We wrote lists of pros and cons, or I certainly wrote lists of pros and cons. We discussed it at length, in fact we even reached a decision at one point that we weren't going to get married at all because we didn't want to upset anybody and we hadn't even told anybody yet that, that was our thought but we thought if we do it this way we're going to upset a lot of people and we don't want to do that. But after a long time of thinking we just came to the conclusion that it's the marriage that's very important for us not the wedding day and as much as it's nice to have people there that love you and want the best for you it is very much about you and when it comes to finances I think nine times out of ten you spend a great deal of money on all of the guests that come along um, rather than refocusing really on the actual event itself and 
I get in, I'm a really stressy and anxious kind of person and I didn't personally want to feel that on my wedding day I was worrying about what Joe Bloggs was doing and Auntie So-and-so was doing and whoever. I wanted just to marry Joe and have our time together and he felt the same, he's quite shy um, and obviously you want your parents there, you know, I know that's a big thing and that is a massive decision to decide not to have your parents there. So if you're thinking about eloping that is a massive Thing to think about and really really think about it now obviously with eloping you can the tradition of eloping is that you are taking yourself out of your environment completely in secret and that you go away and get married and no one knows and that you tell them when you come back which is what a lot of people do do with do do with their elopement but we decided that we thought it would be more respectful to tell all our friends and family that that's the way we were going to do it and as i mentioned earlier my mum and dad kindly offered to help us pay so they paid for the ceremony at the venue, which included two nights stay at the venue. Um, they also paid for the registrar, I'll come to that in a minute, and they also paid for the photographer. In terms of the price difference between getting going to a registry office and having the registrar come out to your venue, A, you have to be in a venue that is legally registered for weddings. You cannot have any religious content if you have a I think I'm right saying a registry office or a ceremony in a venue like we did. We weren't allowed to have any vows with any religious words or phrases or sayings or connotations whatsoever. No, no hymns or anything like that, which we didn't want anyways. It worked for us, but something to consider if you do regularly go to church and you want that, then this probably isn't for you. So there are the things to consider, but also from a price point of view, if you get married in a registry office, I believe you can get married for under £300. I don't know what the waiting time is like, but that's very straightforward because you're going to them, they're taking your ceremony. I'm sorry, I keep throwing my hands around today. They're doing the ceremony for you and it's pretty straightforward. If you want to get married in a venue, like I said, you have to make sure it's, it's um, an approved venue, but then you have to book two registrars, um, you usually just book them as a package, not individually, but the registrar then to come to the venue. So that costs quite a lot more money. So where it might cost two or three hundred pounds in the registry office, to bring them out would cost five hundred or six hundred pounds. So it's a lot more just for the convenience of you having the wedding where you wanted it. But we figured that we weren't doing everything else so therefore we would spend money on getting married where we wanted to get married. So as part of our package we got two nights in the venue, uh, I'll link the vlogs below so you can see, but we got a lovely little apartment. We could have stayed for longer, we could have extended that and paid for that, but we wanted to go on other places. So two nights in our venue, obviously our ceremony and a wedding breakfast and champagne and, and the registrar and it was perfect, absolutely perfect. So. The other thing is to consider is whether you're going to have a photographer or someone there to take a video. We chose a local photographer. Now the reason we did that is because we knew we were going to have or we would like photos on beaches or wherever and he knows where he's going. We chose Adam Gibbard and he's amazing, I'll link him down below. He cost us or cost my dad, I think, oh, I can't remember, I'm going to have to, no, I can't remember. It was less than £400. I'm sure it was less than £400. But the reason that was such a big deal is because I contacted a lot of photographers and looked at their work, found work that I liked, contacted them. But their rates were £1,500 plus, regardless of whether you were having an elopement or a full wedding. Now, if you think about a full wedding, you have your photographer there, let's say, from 10 in the morning whilst you're getting ready. You know, he or she may photograph the bridal party and the groom, etc. Then you go off to your church or your venue. Then you have that time in between with the meal and then you have the reception, disco, whatever. They're working all day. So that money kind of maybe is justified. But for an elopement, you, we got married at 12, the ceremony finished at half past 12, and then we had a couple of hours of photos. So we had Adam for three hours, and the rate was brilliant, and he was local and recommended, and I'd seen his work. So make sure you check all of that out. Make sure it's the style that you want, and make sure if you're going off to a venue that they recommend people to you that they've worked with before. They, Boho Cornwall, highly recommended Adam. He's fantastic. He... The wind was quite extreme on the day we got married um, and so he knew what part of Cornwall to take us to for the photos that were out of the wind and it was great. Um, and I would definitely recommend having someone do photos, if not a video, we didn't do a video, but certainly if you're getting married on your own, the rest of your family needs something <laughs> and you need something. So definitely, definitely spend some money on that. Um, 
In terms of things like wedding cakes, we chose not to have a wedding cake. Oh, sorry, I've got to move my foot. It's dead. We chose not to have a wedding cake. In fact, we decided about three or four days after our wedding that we hadn't had a wedding cake. So our friends who were in Cornwall at the time, we phoned them up and we said, we're going to go and buy a cake. It's the cake. It's our wedding day cake. We went to Tesco's and we bought a Cadbury's mini egg cake for £3 and some ice cream and went off to their place and ate that. So that's what we did. But again, we're not very traditional. So but if you are traditional, there's no reason why you can't go the whole hog and have the cake and have something, you know, there for you. Um, in terms of my bouquet, I contacted a company called the Cornish Cutting Garden and they're a beautiful company um, about an hour away from our venue, 45 minutes away from our venue. And they have volunteers that help them grow their plants and flowers. I'll link them below and the lady who runs it is amazing. Definitely check them out if you are in that area getting married. I didn't know what my bouquet was going to look like. I'd shown her my Pinterest board and colours but I didn't know what I was going to get. Um, I just told her what I liked and I, more importantly I told her what I didn't like. And so I got an amazing bouquet. I'll try and insert a picture of it now. Um, so there are things to think about. I We decided to go for a traditional kind of wedding dress and suit idea and very, very basic rings. I have just a silver band, which I bought myself and Joe bought his own ring. And my band was £120 and Joe's ring was about £80 or £90. So we didn't spend a lot of money. We would sort of thought that if we get older and we have more money to invest in jewellery than we can, but it's more about being married than it is about the jewellery. So you'll see that we were very much non-traditional. My dress, um, which I'll put a picture up of now, um, was from Devingham's and it cost me under £200. It was in the sale, it was about 390 or 80 I could be getting that wrong, but anyway, I don't know that they sell it anymore. If they do, I'll link it below, but I'm not sure they do. But I loved it, the only problem with it is I had a side zip, which everybody kept saying to me, don't get a side zip, and it's a bugger to do up. Joe had already seen the dress because he had to help me try it on, he helped me get into it. My shoes were from BHS, so that's British Home Stores, they were £35. I will try and put a picture of those in as well. Um, but again, you know, you can go all out. The people that got married um, at Boho Cornwall, I think a couple of months before us, one lady had a big full puffy proper dress um, and another couple I've seen wore matching jumpers so when you elope the choice is yours really the sky's the limit um, or not depending on what you prefer I've seen pictures of people getting married in jeans and converse so really totally up to you um, I think I'm going to get on something a bit more serious about eloping now so I'm going to release my foot and sit up a bit <laughs> I think the main things to consider with eloping is that it's a lot easier to, the pros are it's very, very easy to organise, you're in complete control, it's totally what the two of you want. You get to choose traditional vows or you can write your own, you get to choose some music to walk into, certainly at the venue, I'm talking about the venue that obviously we got married in. The downsides are the ripple effect of what might happen with friends and family. The pre Predominantly our friends and family were very understanding, we went through a few road bumps along the way of friends saying, oh well you know, why are you doing it this way? And but I think if you explain it to people, and none of our decisions are based on the fact that we didn't want family there, it was just on the fact that we're both fairly, well, Joe's shy, I don't like having the attention, we didn't want to spend loads of money, we didn't have any money, um, and it wasn't fair to ask for the money from someone else, even though we're very, very fortunate to have got it, which is amazing. Um, we didn't feel right with saying we need 20 grand for a wedding. We just, we're saving for a deposit on a house. We can't, you know, we couldn't justify that. So I think if you sit people down and you make it very clear why you're doing it, um, and maybe have a do beforehand or a party afterwards or a dinner or something. We had mum and dad around for a dinner before we went away. And yeah, it was, it was incredible. And it's, just to give you an idea of our day, we woke up on our wedding day, we had our breakfast delivered at 8am, it was gorgeous. If you've seen the vlogs, you would know what I'm talking about. Um, we got married at 12, the photographer got with us at 11. He was in the background whilst I was doing my hair and whatever, taking photos. And um, We got married at 12, the ceremony finished at 12.30. The photographer left, let us completely on our own. Adam just said to us, just go back to your apartment and have 10-15 minutes. He was loading stuff back into his car anyway for us to go out. Um, so we just took a moment together, took a few selfies and just were like, wow, you know, we're married now, this is amazing. Really, really quiet, really peaceful. And then we went off to have our photos taken. Then we came back at about half past three. Everybody had gone, Adam had gone, um, Tom and Maya who owned the place, just leave you to it, it's fantastic. And we just got out of our wedding stuff, 
um, and sat in our pyjamas and had a cup of tea and the patio doors that look out to the field at the property we could see you know the sea and the bunnies hopping around we just sat on the little snuggle seat in there and we were like wow we're married and we just kept laughing and it was just really relaxed and I kept waiting for nerves to turn up but they didn't um, and then we had a couple of hours there and we Skyped my mum and dad and you know got in contact with a few friends and stuff and then we got showered and dressed and went out for dinner and we had a really chilled out dinner at our favourite restaurant in Senon and I just had a burger and chips and Joe had a steak and we shared dessert and we got home and had a bit of champagne. It was amazing and there was no faffing about, there was no anxiety on my part at all. Um, it just felt really, really cool and everybody made it really special. We had two fantastic registrars who were a hoot, they were so funny and so sweet. And I honestly can't recommend it enough. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. And um, yeah, I just think it's the best way to go if that's your thing. But on the other side of the coin, I completely get it if you want the big do because part of me could see how you would get carried away into that. It's just not for me, but I love being at a big wedding. I love it so much, but it was just too much, too much money, too much to sort out my head with the way my kind of mental health has been recently wouldn't have been good in that situation, Joe's wouldn't have either. So just take your time, I wouldn't rush into it. I would just really give yourself a good year or year and a half to think about whether eloping is for you and the knock-on effects of that. And if all of those things pale into significance over getting married, just go and do it. And I think it would be great. So yes, I will link everything that I've mentioned in the down bar. I'm sorry that I've waffled on. That's just kind of like a mind dump here of everything that I think is important. But if you, if you have any burning questions, please, please, please email me or comment below. My email's in the down bar, as I said. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and do subscribe if you want more from me. And I will see you very, very soon, guys. Bye.